Greetings and welcome to the Fortress Biotech Conference. It is now my pleasure to introduce your host, Dr. Lindsay Rosenwald, CEO of Fortress Biotech. Thank you, Dr. Rosenwald. You may begin. Thank you, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to uh, present to you today at the SNN uh, virtual conference, and it certainly is virtual. You can't see me. I can't see you. It's starting to get long in the tooth. Can't wait to get back to reality. But in the meantime, it's a pleasure. Uh, we'll be making some forward-looking statements today. Uh, feel free to look at our uh, SEC filings for all of our detailed financial information and risk factors. So I usually like to start with what the opportunity is uh, as a potential uh, investor in Fortress. We have a lot of near-term key catalysts that we believe can create uh, value opportunities. We have a very robust pipeline with 25 or more development stage uh, biotech and pharmaceutical product candidates. I like to think we so far have a very solid track record of execution. Uh, we certainly believe there's a significant valuation dislocation, and hopefully at the end of the presentation, you'll agree. And of course, last but not least, is we have had uh, very good revenue growth in our in our uh, commercial arm, and we anticipate continued near-term and long-term revenue growth. So on the next slide. Uh, this is a snapshot of most of uh, what Fortress has in the way of commercial and, and clinical and preclinical programs. As you can see, we are an incredibly well-diversified company. All of these assets have been acquired over the last five years or so. Uh, our goal is to create shareholder value without taking the traditional single product risk of most life science companies. To hedge that risk even further, we have a commercial business, as you can see on the left side, and we'll get to that in a moment, a very successful commercial business. Uh, we have a, a fairly decent number of late clinical and early clinical programs, as well as a robust preclinical pipeline. At the bottom of this slide, you can see that we are quite opportunistic. We are not focusing only in one therapeutic category, such as oncology. We're not focusing on just one uh, type of molecule, be that a antisense molecules or antibodies or proteins or peptides or small molecules. Basically, what we look for, and we'll get to that in a few minutes, is we look for drug candidates, most of which that are in clinical trials already and have some very intriguing um, uh, proof of concept. On slide five, this really is the most important slide in the deck because it is a rare uh, slide you won't see in other life science company uh, presentations. We're focusing on trying to generate cash flow and shareholder value uh, each year. And as you can see, this is a snowball going down a mountain each year. We're hoping that our value grows and our cash flow can grow. The middle of the snowball is that cross section on the right. We create value five ways. Number one is revenue growth. As I mentioned, we'll get to in a minute, our dermatology business uh, is growing very rapidly. Last year generated just under 35 million in sales in the third full year of operations. Second is balance sheet growth. Currently, we have 11 partner companies. And as you'll see, the partner companies do all of the research and development, or most of the research and development in our pipeline. Uh, as a result, we do get, when these partner companies are, are uh, put together, we get a large block of stock in these companies. And as the years go by, the amount of stock in more and more companies, and hopefully as those companies go up in value, uh, the value of those shares in our balance sheet will grow and eventually becomes a source of cash flow. Monetizations, as you'll see in a few minutes, uh, a big part of our business is taking some of these companies and, and partnering them out and in some cases actually selling the companies based on certain milestones, which can generate a great deal of cash flow and shareholder value. 
Another way is the PRV. These are priority review vouchers. These are incentives from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to develop drugs for rare uh, pediatric and rare tropical diseases. Uh, in the Fortress uh, uh, universe, we have three potential PRVs that we believe we'll be able to sell in the 22 to 24 time frame that each one can generate on an average 75 to $150 million in value to the Fortress companies. And last but not least, in most of our partner companies, when the drugs get to market, we're entitled to royalties on product sales. But here's our dermatology business. So for those of you who may remember a company by the name of Medicis Pharmaceuticals, Medicis was a very, very successful dermatology pharmaceutical company. It was acquired by Bausch Health about six years ago for $2.5 billion. Uh, we got very lucky several years ago where we were able to recruit the, some of the senior management team from Medicis. Certainly, we think the best part of the management team. Uh, together, we set up a company, a subsidiary of Fortress called Journey Medical Corporation. And again, this is in the same mold as Medicis, focusing on dermatology products. To date, we have acquired eight already FDA-approved products that were either not being marketed or under-marketed by the companies that owned those products. We have grown from sales of 3.6 million in uh, in 2016 to last year's 34.9 million. And as you can see, we had a great start to the year, uh, almost 12 million in sales in, in the first quarter of this year. Uh, Journey has, in addition to a great management team, we have 43 of the best uh, uh, pharmaceutical salespeople in the industry. We cover the top 5,000 prescribing dermatologists with some really great products. Uh, even with COVID-19 slowing down the U.S. economy and the global economy, we do expect our second quarter results, which we will announce uh, in the next week or so, will certainly greatly exceed the second quarter of last year. And uh, we certainly are optimistic that we'll have record revenue again this year. Obviously, we did slow down relative to the first quarter because we did have to take our sales force off the uh, street for a couple of months as everybody else did, but uh, we are again expecting record revenue for the year. So let's go through our strategy because it is pretty unique in the business. Again, we are trying to grow a life sciences company that can become profitable generate rapid revenue growth, not just through product acquisitions in our dermatology franchise, but through lots of development stage programs. Uh, as a result, business development is our research and development, essentially. We don't invent any drugs. We don't do very early stage uh, investing, by and large. What we're looking to do, we have approximately 10 full-time business development people these tend to be primarily medical doctors and PhDs that decide they don't want any more to be practicing medicine or, or sitting in a laboratory, but instead want to get into the business of life sciences. And their primary job is to identify medicines or development stage medicines that are in clinical trials that look like they have very good proof of concept such that we and our expert advisors and the industry and academic leading key opinion leaders believe that those drugs have a high likelihood of, of being successful in the later clinical trials to get to the market. So their job is to identify those. In a world of hundreds of billions of dollars a year in life science research and development, whether it's in the U.S., whether it's outside of the U.S., whether it's in big companies or small, whether it's in university laboratories or the NIH or Wherever you find that hundreds of billions of dollars worth of research and development, you can believe me, it's a very inefficient market where you can buy high quality clinical stage medicines at what are 
essentially incredibly low valuations if you are willing to spend the time, the money, and have the discipline to look for those opportunities. They don't just show up on, on your uh, doorstep through some investment bank or going through a, a, a licensing process. You have to dig. Uh, very hard to find them, but we are very good at identifying those sorts of programs. Once we get them, once we license them on reasonable terms, then we have to develop them. Uh, our team at Fortress has a, a great deal of a successful track record, in, track record in developing these medicines. But very important to understand is Fortress is not going to pay for the bulk of the development of these programs. We have traded off the, the risk of, of uh, single product opportunity risk by licensing in you know dozens of programs and products. Uh, therefore, we rely on our partner companies to develop those drugs under our uh, um, tutelage. And last but not least, the last part of our strategy is to monetize these assets. Certainly, we like to see the drugs get through to the to the market and generate real revenues and, and, and royalties and, and share value to us uh, as, as big stockholders in these partner companies. But if we can monetize those assets even earlier on, on very favorable terms, we look to do that also. And as a result, we also have our own people not only looking to in-license programs, but looking to out-license as well as sell our different programs and companies. Dr. Rosenwald, you're back in. Hi, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Are we back on? Hey, is anybody from Issue or Direct on the line? Yes, I'm here. Can you add us back? We got dropped. You should be back on now. We're back on? Are we back on? Yes. Yes. Apologize for that. I guess uh, AT&T decided to interrupt us for a few seconds, but we're back. Uh, So now we're on slide number eight. And this is our slide. We call it How We Do It. Again, the whole idea of Fortress is to increase the intrinsic value of Fortress while we decrease the overall risk of Fortress. We do that by increasingly diversify our asset base, continue to do more and more research and development with, with, with partners, and try to maintain as much of the upside of those uh, partnerships vis-a-vis uh, royalties, equity in these partner companies, milestone payments, and the like. Uh, Our development team, as I mentioned earlier, we have 10 plus business development people uh, looking for these sorts of assets. Within our organization, we have over 30 manufacturing professionals in the biologic space, which is very important to us. We have over 25 MDs and PhDs, so we got a lot of brain power. Uh, our programs, as I said, currently we have five revenue-generating dermatology products. We have over 25 development stage biotech and, and uh, uh, pharmaceutical products, product candidates. And the secret sauce is we're looking for de-risked assets. We're not big risk takers, and we're going to try to get the assets as de-risked as possible and further de-risk them by having a lot of them so that we're not reliant on any one, two, or three programs. Uh, The medicine or the the drug candidates we are looking for have to have a high value, unmet medical needs, so that 
when we go through the effort of getting them through the FDA, there is an actual market for them that is commercially uh, attractive. We can't compete with big drug companies on, on acquisition costs. Uh, it's a very smart group of people we have. So we rely on being first. So that is why we spend so much human capital and actual capital on our development team, because we find assets before others do. And last but not least, if we go back to the earlier slide where I mentioned monetization, we want to make sure that when we buy these assets, we know that if we decide to do an out licensing or an outright sale of one of these assets, that there are already buyers out there for them. The management profile, I don't want to spend a lot of time here, but suffice it to say, everybody on this page has been in the industry well north of 20 years and, and with a great deal of success. Additionally, we have top tier academic and commercial partners. Uh, we have some really great universities and companies we have in license programs from. You can see that list in, in front of you, as well as we have done out licensing deals with, with some of the biggest and best companies uh, in the planet. Uh, I wanted to give you a couple examples. Again, it's a very inefficient market, and I think that this slide can prove it to you. So first, if we start on the right, uh, we have a company, a partner company called Kalem Biosciences. Kalem is a, a, a company we started about three years ago. Uh, this is a perfect example where we, uh, one of my, uh, one of our business development people, through extensive networking, found at Columbia University a monoclonal antibody for uh, what's called AL amyloidosis. It's a uniformly fatal disease uh, if it affects the heart, and it affects the heart in about 75% of these patients. When we found the drug, it was doing exactly what we looked for. It was already in an early clinical trial. It was having dramatic effect on patients with, with uh, late-stage uh, cardiac AL amyloidosis. Uh, the data was incredibly compelling. The good news was the data had not yet been published. It had not yet been presented at a uh, conference. It was already funded by, I think it was the National Cancer Institute, so they were not looking for capital. And since it hadn't been funded and they weren't looking for capital, it was pretty much an unknown story. So we were able to, to go in and do a win-win deal with, with uh, Columbia University. We licensed worldwide rights to, the, to this drug candidate. We set up a partner company called Kalem Biosciences. Uh, we were able to do a deal with Alexion Pharmaceuticals, one of the largest uh, biotech companies in the world. Uh, they saw the value in this asset, and we did a deal that, that uh, they committed upwards of about $140 million to the program and have already put in, I think, close to $50 million into it. So they are helping to finance this program. Again, uh, a wonderful deal for us, a wonderful deal for Alexion, and it will be a wonderful deal for, for patients. Another example is Avenue Therapeutics. So this is another uh, really interesting program. For those of you who are familiar with a drug called Tramadol, Tramadol is one of the most widely prescribed drugs in the world. It's a top 15 or top 20 drug in the United States. It's a pill in the United States for acute and chronic pain. But outside of the world, outside the United States, it's available both as a pill for outpatient use, but also as an intravenous solution for post-surgical acute pain. We were able to acquire newly issued patents uh, on uh, United States patents several years ago for intravenous use in the United States. We set up a partner company called Avenue Therapeutics to develop this. This was a relatively low risk program. As a, uh, Bill, I don't know if it's you, but somebody put yourself on mute, please. It's very noisy. Um, uh, we set up a partner company called Avenue Therapeutics. We went to Wall Street, $35 million to pay for the phase two and the first phase three drug. Again, this was just what we call a 505B2, a reformulation of an existing drug. So by nature, it's a little bit less risky than, than uh, novel new chemical entities. 
Uh, we then, uh, after a very successful phase two and, and a phase three trial, we did a deal with a wonderful uh, company called Cipla for their, their uh, subsidiary Invigent. Uh, they put up the remaining additional $35 million to finish the, the phase second phase three clinical trial, the large safety trial. We filed for approval in the fourth quarter of last year with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. We have a, what's called a PDUFA date. We're uh, hoping for a, an approval for this drug on or before October 10th of this year. At that point, if certain conditions are met, then CIPLA would acquire the company for $180 million, which would include $48 million to Fortress and would also include uh, uh, what we call a contingent value right, which is basically royalties on product sales through the life of the patent, which goes out, as I recall, to to uh, 2036. So again, these were opportunities that we found through our business development team that had tremendous economic value when we found them. We got to them first, we like to think, and, and were able to do win-win deals with the people we bought the programs from and with the companies that we out-licensed or partnered with. It's not just these two drugs. As I said, we have over 25 drugs in development, and I think it's around 15 in, in the clinic. As I mentioned, we have our first potential approval coming up this year, uh, but this is our near-term value-creating pipeline. As you can see, we have a number of drugs over the next year or two that could create a lot of value for us. We have the IV tramadol. We have uh, several others that are really interesting, and with a little bit of time left, I'll go through uh, a couple more. We also have an early clinical stage pipeline with some really exciting drug candidates. And a little bit more. It's been a while since I looked at this. Uh, as you can see, we have hedged ourselves with lots and lots of opportunities and, and great, great partner companies. Here's another example of the inefficiency in the marketplace. Uh, I'm sure some of you have, have seen on Seinfeld a very funny episode uh, about bubble boy disease, which is not a funny disease at all. It's a terrible disease. Uh, it's also called X-SKID, X-Link Severe Combined Immunodeficiency. These are uh, newborn children that are born with a single gene defect that are not able to, to fight infections. Their white cells are unable to fight infection, and therefore these kids used to be put in bubbles, and as soon as they got exposed to a virus or, or a bacteria, unfortunately, uh, they would pass away because they couldn't fight the infection. About 35 years ago, these Four children started getting treated with bone marrow transplants to get uh, a, new, a new immune system, which did work in, in most cases, but certainly did not provide most of these children with a, a normal immunity, a normal lifestyle, and there was a pressing need for a cure. Uh, one of our business development people found at St. Jude's uh, Children's uh, Medical Research Hospital an incredible gene therapy that had been in, in uh, multiple newborn children with, with great, um, great clinical outcomes. Uh, again, we found this pretty early, apparently. We were able to do a win-win deal with, with, uh, with, with St. Jude's. Uh, it is in our partner company called Mustang Bio. In fact, this year we anticipate now starting two pivotal clinical trials that could add a great deal of value to shareholders as well as to these children. Really excited about it. Um, another one which we expect to launch our uh, rolling new drug uh, submission in the fourth quarter this year is a drug for a ultra-rare orphan pediatric disease called Menke's disease. Um, this was a program we licensed out of the National Institute of Health. Uh, when we found the program, it had enrolled uh, many children in this program. It's basically a small molecule injected uh, as soon as possible after the child is born. They have a gene defect. They are unable to absorb copper through their GI tract after they're born, and it is a terrible, terrible disease. We have great hope for this drug. So far, the data is very compelling. Uh, as I said, we will be filing for approval Initially, initiating the filing this year. We hope to have it approved by the end of next year. This would uh, potentially come with one of these rare pediatric uh, priority review vouchers that has a great deal of economic value. 
And, you know, we are coming up to the end, so we're not going to have time to go through the whole deck. Certainly, you can go to FortressBiotech.com to see the rest of our deck. Uh, but, again, we have a, a large portfolio of programs and, and variety of clinical trials. Uh, we'll uh, initiate in the second half of this year four pivotal trials for our programs, and we certainly anticipate acquiring many more assets over the next 12 and 24 months, both dermatology assets for our journey medical division, as well as development stage programs for both some of our partner companies, as well as for Fortress itself. So with that, I thank you very, very much for your attention, and feel free to reach out to myself or or Bill Bijan, uh, our head of investor relations, if you have any questions. Thank you, and have a great day. This concludes today's webcast. You may disconnect at this time. Thank you for your participation.